Hi guys, so I'm here with another book review <coughs> another book review video. I have seven books. Um the first two I'm gonna tell you guys about are actually books I don't have. They're actually library books and I had to return them. Um they go hand in hand. I seen the first book one time when I went to the library. I didn't know if it was a series, I didn't know if it was <coughs> part of a series or what book it was in the series, that kind of thing. And the second book in this series is called The Stolen Slippers. It's kind of like what what this book is about is it or the series is about is this girl and her friends. Um, some of them live in this different <coughs> fairy tale world called Never After, and her grandma or something like that was the writer of these books that she loved to read. And it's actually about the characters that are in this Never After world. And she has to make the 13th book, because there was 13 fairies. And she has to rewrite the book so that way it's told the true way and not the false way. Anyway, second one picks up where the first book left off, obviously. And I said it was <coughs> called The Stolen Slippers. It's by Melissa D. La Cruz. She wrote the Descendants books, if you ever read them. Um, and basically, the whole premise is to get this um, glass slippers back from Cinderella, because in this world, Cinderella is actually evil, and her stepsisters are actually the nice, um, <coughs> the nice, um, the nice women in this book. And they have to return them to one of the group's cousins, because <laughs> um, she's really, one. Um, her name's Gretel from Hansel and Gretel, and she has to return them to her cousins. And in the process, it's like a mixture of Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast mixed with Wonderland. <laughs> it, it's a really weird book. But it's just basically how the stories were supposed to be told, I guess. And this third book that I just got done finishing yesterday, but I had to give it back to the library, was called The Broken Mirror. And this book is kind of like Cinderella. I'm not Cinderella, Snow White, sorry. Um, where they're going to see, go, they're going to this um, <clears throat> other part of this land, which is Snow Country. And they end up meeting Snow White's daughter. They meet these seven giants instead of dwarfs. Because <clears throat> dwarfs is an acronym in Never After. And they have to, obviously, um, the main character has to be told what the real um, story was about um, Snow White's daughter, which is Rose Red. And they have to make a mirror. <clears throat> because all these magic mirrors are taken over by the evil pro, um, antagonist character, which is Queen Olga and her ogres. And they have control of all these mirrors. And here they have to um, <coughs> help out all of the, the three different um, places in Never After by, by the summer solstice, where they have to be crowned these royals have to be crowned by the summer solstice and all these things happened to the land, um, to these rulers that were supposed to rule. And they're like, oh, we're running out of time, we're running out of time. And here they break, they try to break these curses that were holding back these royals from ruling. And then there's a fourth book, I think, coming out. I don't know if it already came out. I know there's another book, but the I think the last book doesn't come out until the end of this year. I think it said it came out, like, December 3rd, 2024 or something. But I really liked these. Now, these were made for, like, young adults, like, tweens, I would say, because the chapters weren't that... <clears throat> there was, they were like, there was, like, 42 chapters in each book that I read, and most of the chapters weren't that long. Some were, like, a page or a page and a half long. Um, but, yeah, those were really good. I really wish they made a movie out of those books. Because they just, and they seem like those other books that I read, I don't know what they're called. They're like the Disney ones where, um, <clears throat> I haven't read one in a while, but they're like, um, 
I forget. Like some there was like a Peter Pan one, there was um a frozen one where it says, Oh, it's you know, the characters and then it says, What if this didn't happen and how would that affect the story? Like I think in the Peter Pan one it was about what if Wendy went with Captain Hook instead of Peter Pan, that kind of thing. So let's get into the books that I have. <clears throat> this is called The Popes, The Lives of the Pontiffs Through 2,000 Years of History. This is what it looks like. Um, this book was long. <clears throat> it was only 107 pages. But depending on how long the Pope lasted for, that's how long of a big chunk of the page it was. Like sometimes there's like three on a page. Sometimes there's four. Sometimes there's only two on a page. It only goes up to the beginning of Pope John Paul II's reign. Um, <clears throat> so, like, that. the one thing in this book, though, that was really bad was there was a lot of spelling errors and chronological errors. There was one pope where it said he reigned from, like, 1910 to, like, 1091 or something like that. And it was really supposed to be 1091 to whatever that was wrong in this book so you really have to be careful when you read this book if anybody does I mean you wouldn't think it would take me that long because it was short how short it is but it took me a while <clears throat> um it was text the text was by Antonio Lopez um there are pictures of the popes in there it tells you like it goes you know in chronicle <coughs> chronological order it talks about what they did um, what if they were like a cardinal or something before they were pope, what family they belonged to. Towards the end of the book, it showed different like crests or flags that the popes had, that kind of thing. I really liked it because I like reading about like popes and presidents and royals and all that kind of stuff. So I really liked it. I think I'm actually going to keep that book, even though there was a lot of like grammatical errors in it. So this book... I like reading these books. I have a couple of these books. Um, it's an Annie's Attic Mystery. It's called A Man of His Word. It's by Karen Kelly. This is what it looks like. And I think this was the book I picked up. Well, sorry. The book I picked up before the Pope book. And it's basically this woman who lives in this small town and she inherited, I don't know if it was her grandmother's house or great aunt's house. And basically every time in the in each of these books, they go up to the attic and they find like a mystery. And this mystery was she found a Bible. And it belonged to, um, I forget what his name was, Judge something. I forget how he was related to Annie. But anyway, it might have been, like, her great-great-grandfather or something like that. And basically, there, when she's reading this Bible, he wrote in the margins different things. And she's trying to figure out, why did he write certain things? Why did he write certain things in Latin or whatever language it was? And with the help of her friends, she figures out this deeper mystery that, excuse me, happened. And I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. It was a quick read. It does come with its own like little in built-in bookmarker, so that's always nice. Second to last book. This is called Brian's Winter. It's by Gary Paulson. Now I did read a few book reviews back, Hatchet. And like I said, I read Hatchet a long time ago, like when I was like in grade school. And Remember, like, I don't know if anybody remembers, so I don't, I don't think they even do it in school anymore, where you used to get those little magazines for, from Scholastic to buy books, like, I don't know if it was every month or, like, quarterly, and I bought one, well, my mom bought one, um, Brian's Return, that was, like, the sequel to um, Hatchet, and this is basically, um, Gary Polson wrote in the beginning of this book that... People were asking him, like, well, what happened if Brian didn't get rescued in Hatchet? What happened if he had to survive the winter? It's basically, like, what he thought, of course, you know, of what Brian would do. Like, would he survive in the winter? What would he do? How would he be able to <laughs> survive 
the wilderness and the wilderness and the winter time, that kind of thing. This is what it looks like. Now, this book was just okay. Like I said, it was like a hypothetical book, you know, if he survived and if he did survive in the winter, would he get um, rescued, that kind of thing. And I really liked it. I don't, I don't remember ever reading this book. Um, I only, like I said, I only remember Brian's return and Hatchet. And I did, <coughs> at a book sale, I did find Brian's return. So eventually when I get to it, I will read it again. And this is the last book. Now this book was really funny. It's called Embarking on Murder. It's by Sue Owens Wright. It's a Beanie and Cruiser mystery. That's what it looks like. The dog's name is Cruiser. He's a bloodhound. And basically, <clears throat> her and... I forget who else it was. I don't know if it was her boyfriend or her friends and her friends, something like that, go on this cruise for... I think it was her birthday... Or it was for some kind of celebration anyway. And <clears throat> they think that somebody went overboard. And they can't find this woman. She was basically being kind of snotty to her husband. And it was the type of couple where he was rich and had money. And she was like the young hot thing kind of thing. And his children didn't like her. His adult children didn't like her. And stuff like that. So when they come back from their little cruise around the lake, they decide <clears throat> to look into this case. And what happens is is they get sidetracked with this other thing about there's this like kind of like a Loch Ness monster in this lake. I forget what lake it was. Um, I think it was Lake Ta Yeah, it was Lake Tahoe. And they call this monster Tessie. So, there's, like, two separate storylines going on. It was really funny. Um, she takes her dog with her on these event on these adventures. And I thought it was a really good book. I really liked it. It was really cute. There was a twist in this book. And I think... No, I have one more book that I didn't talk about. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't know... I didn't... I know I didn't read... Uh, I know I didn't do a review on this book. Now, I don't know how you say this title... Of this book, so if I butcher it, I apologize. And if I butcher the author, I apologize. It's, um, Climb Tenestra. I don't know if that's how you say her name. It's by Costanza Cassetti. This is what it looks like. It's in, I think, four different parts. And it's about this woman who she grew up <coughs> on this island. It has a list of characters in it. And when you first read it, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, there's all these characters in this book. Like, how am I going to keep them all straight? But I just went back and forth a couple of times to remember, like, this was her sister. This was her cousin. This was her brother. This was X, Y, Z, that kind of thing. It was basically this woman who, I forget what island she lived on in Greece. And she starts out getting married to this man who she loves. And here these other two men come into play when she's pregnant with her husband's baby. And he had to go off to his own land where he ruled to get stuff ready for when, you know, she had her baby and stuff like that. And he was going to come back before she had the baby. And it's basically, I rem the king's name or the prince's name was... Agamemnon, Ag Agamemnon, or something like however you say it. And I remember him from like Greek mythology. And I think we're getting into like this trend now in books where a lot more people, it's either I feel like it's either writing contemporary romance or they're writing novels about Greek mythology for some reason. I don't know why. But basically, <clears throat> she has the baby, her husband's with her. And Agamemnon is this evil man who his family killed to get where they were in life. And that's how his dad became ruler of the island or city or wherever that he lived in. And basically, um, her husband and her baby die. And she knows it was the work of Agamemnon and her father was in on it. And then she marries Agamemnon. They go off um, back to his land 
or city or wherever. And she just detests him. He is so horrible. Um, there is, it, it does like time skip. So it goes like a couple years into the future, that kind of thing. Um, but not too far into the future where you don't know what's going on. And what happens is, is he goes off to war and in the process, um, he says to, he, he, um, brings back a messenger saying that his daughter should marry this man. I think it was Achilles or something. And when she takes her daughter to where they are, um, she ends up being like a sacrifice. So that way, cause it was about like, it was really windy and he had this, um, seer guy who said, I guess if we sacrifice like a virgin, then <clears throat> the winds will die down and then they can sail and win in this war. And this war went on forever. And this whole time she was the ruling queen of this land that she was now in because she married Ayn Magmon. And when he comes back, she gets her revenge. And it's kind of like... I don't know, like I like I said, I don't know that much about Agamemnon. I know he was a king, but I don't know that much about him. But it was a really good book. It was long though. Um the chapters were kinda long. Um but I still liked it. I mean I like reading Greek Greek mythology books, Roman mythology books, that kind of thing. Any mythology book I like. Um, but I really liked it. Um <clears throat> so I'll see you guys next time with another video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.